I really want to help you obtain a Pokemon card grail. That is why I am going to give away $1,000 to one lucky subscriber. The only caveat is it has to be spent on Pokemon cards. And if you want to win, here's what you have to do. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and then leave a like and a comment on this video right up here. Come back on February 23rd, Friday, February 23rd, where we will announce the winner at the beginning of the video. Good luck. A 42? I think this is 42. 42 consecutive days. What is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Fanny Dantump, otherwise known as Danny Phantump. I hope you guys are all doing well. I have a question for you, so pause the video. Don't pause the video. Wait for the question first and then pause the video. Or just keep listening to the video and then just answer the question. What is your favorite generation when it comes to Pokemon cards? Your favorite generation when it comes to collecting Pokemon cards? Pokemon has done a really good job of evolving as more and more sets have released, right? So uh, in, in the current set, in the current generation, they have illustration or special illustration rares. In the Sword and Shield block, they kind of introduced alternate art. They reintroduced the Lost Zone mechanic. It was really cool. Uh, during the, the Sun and Moon era, uh, they, they did have some alternate arts. But for the most part, they had uh, full art GXs. They had uh, a lot of really cool cards. In the XY era, it was full art Megas. Full art Megas was a really cool introduction. Black and White had full art EXs. They had the introduction of those gold cards at the beginning with black and white base. And you've had a whole lot of other generations introduce some amazing Pokemon cards. You've had uh, Crystal cards come out of the world work you've had legend cards you've had prime there's been so many really cool uh really cool gimmicks that pokemon has brought into an entire generation which has been a lot of fun obviously in sword and shield it was supposed to be like v maxes right it was really supposed to be v maxes and v stars but alternate arts kind of took over we're going to talk about alternate arts in this video because i'm really curious as to know what is going to happen next i think a lot of people sword and shield is going to be the favorite generation for an extremely long time unless pokemon does something Something in Scarlet and Violet that really tops it, which I don't know if they're going to be able to. And then moving forward in future generations, what can Pokemon really do uh, to be able to top uh, Sword and Shield? The alternate arts, the artwork is just absolutely amazing. And there's a huge difference between collectors now and collectors from years ago when my Gold Star cards came out, right? It's, it's just the overall knowledge, the overall understanding of how to protect your collection, how to store cards, grading cards, things like that. And that really has me curious as to how alternate arts are going to be performing in the future because they are being preserved so much better uh, than what we saw like gold star cards being preserved and crystal cards and shinings and things like that when we were younger and we were collecting these cards a lot of times we may have put them in a three ring binder and then all of a sudden they get dinged up by the rings or we may have just put them in some soft sleeves or some penny sleeves and let them lie around the room and they collected dust or they collected like it's just so different now and you can see that looking at alternate arts and I did put uh, pop report numbers on it. some of them are absolutely insane so it'll be really interesting now as we continue to move forward and get further and further away from the sword and shield era still seems to me a lot of people are just focusing on sword and shield continuing to shore up collections continuing to fill out master sets i'm going to flip you guys around we're going to look at the past year of data when it comes to the best selling the most expensive of all of the alternates there's still a lot of them that are very pricey some of them doing extremely well for the most part none of them are trending downwards anymore they're either even they're either moving flat and level or they're starting to gain a little bit of momentum back and we're we're going to look at uh basically in order the most expensive to the least expensive of the top 15 there's a lot of them that are out there that are relatively cheap you look at ones like the skunk tank uh the skunk tank v the santa kind v uh those are really really cheap those are seven eight dollars five even less than that the Conkledor v from uh, pokemon go a lot of alternate arts that are really inexpensive but some of them uh, like this Moonbrion here, for example, that still has quite a bit of value of it. If we look at the past year, so in February of 2023, the Umbreon VMAX was still during this, it was still going through this epic climb where it was just shooting up like crazy. We went through a lot of alternate arts going up right around this time, but then it seemed to have climaxed right around April of 2023. And that's when a lot of these alternate art cards started going backwards and there really wasn't an end in sight. You can see a very, very steep decline from April of 2023 all the way uh, up until October of 2023. 
2023, where it hit its one-year high in April of $652.25. That's a lot of money uh, for a, a modern-day card. If you go look at uh, the base set Charizard, for example, you could buy lightly played, moderately played Charizards for $30, $40, dollars all the way up until 2016, 2017. They were still very, very inexpensive. Uh, and now, nowadays, uh, a few years after that, they, they started ballooning up to like three, four hundred dollars. So market correction, you can call it whatever you want. But the Moonbrion, obviously, starting in a much different spot than some of those other older chase cards that we look at. So you can see it hit its low in October of 2023, $490.03. It has rebounded a little bit, sitting at 544.10. So it's doing pretty well. But if you look at the pop report, and this is the major difference between collectors now versus collectors back in, you know, the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, there were a lot of people who did grade, uh, grade cards all the way up until, you know, 2017, 2018, before it started getting a little bit more popular. Uh, but having that foresight really set apart a lot of collectors. And you look at how many, there's 13,394 copies of the, the Moonbrion that have been graded. And this is just PSA. This isn't including uh, any BGS. This isn't including any SGC or any AGS or any other CGC, any other grading companies out there. We are just looking at PSA. Really PSA kind of the uh, the bread and butter when it comes to, to grading cards, right? They've been doing it for a very long time. This is what a lot of people look at when it comes to pricing. They put up PSA numbers and things like that. And it should be continuing to have that trend for a, a long time in the future. But you look at the amount of 10s that are out there, 10,113. That's a lot of 10s. Now there's a lot of them that haven't been graded and a lot of them that are less than 10s. Uh, but those pop reports, very, very large when you compare to like the base at Charizard, for example. Here's the Giratina V from Lost Origin. This one got hit really hard by the reprint. More supply started hitting the market. And you can see where it was in February of 2023, much like what we saw from the Moonbrion right around a one-year high at that point in time. It was sitting at $331.89, relatively level. And then July, that's when that reprint of Lost Origin happened. And then it started going down. Not necessarily because more seal product uh, became available, but because more seal product became available, more booster packs were being opened, more boxes were being opened because the box price came down, you know, to $115, $120. And you can see in December of 2023, that's where it finally hit its low point of $232.16. Now it's gained almost 10% of that back. It's sitting at $252.70. So maybe you might have seen a little bit of a correction with a lot of these alternate arts. Maybe they were a bit too high. And now you might see a, a much more slow, lethargic growth pattern over the next year. It'll be very interesting to see how these cards perform in 2024. Uh, sitting at $252.70. Currently, 7,128 of these have been graded with PSA. So a much smaller sample size that have been graded with PSA than that Moonbrion that we just looked at. Only 3,000 three only 3,394 PSA 10s compared to the the huge amount that we just look at 10,113 <laughs> uh, PSA 10s for the Moonbrion only 3,394 for Lost Origin Lost Origin did not have uh, great printing quality when it originally released it was it was just it was all over the place uh, there was a lot of whitening a lot of damaged edges things like that made it very difficult centering problems all over the place QC has come a long way for Pokemon uh, but still has a long way to go here's the Rayquaza V Max uh, from Evolve this guys this one has been trending downward uh, really since April of 2023 like what we saw from a lot of these other ones $303 and six cents is where it was in April and it's been coming down it started leveling out a little bit so you can see in January of 2024 is when it hit that three or that one year low of 238.31 now it's gained about five percent of that back it's sitting at 249.79 now relatively flat we'll see how it does over the next couple months but it may have bottomed out a little bit at this point still a lot of them that have been graded 8843 much less than what we saw from the Umbreon VMAX, over 10,000 10s just for the Umbreon VMAX, but still a large sample size of 10s for this Rayquaza VMAX, 6,596 of them graded in PSA 10. Here's the Gengar VMAX right here. Unlike a lot of these other alternates that we're looking at, uh, this card has been rising steadily pretty much ever since it came out. You can see in February of 2023, it was sitting at a one-year low of 157.73. Went up quite a bit over the next few months and then kind of leveled out all the way up until December where it started to backtrack a little bit, dropped below 190, and then started going back up a little bit. Hit that one-year high of 218.22 at the beginning of uh, February, end of January. Now it's come back a little bit. It's sitting at 206.60 currently, uh, but still definitely way above where it was in February of last year. A, a decent size sampling when it comes to graded cards 
cards, 8,105, so a little bit more than what we saw from the last couple that we looked at. Still less than the Moonbrion, uh, but 5,014 that, that have been graded in PSA 10. This is just such a beautiful card. So beautiful. Uh, here's the Blaziken VMAX. This one, much smaller sampling size when it comes to the grading scale. Only 3,614 of these uh, when it comes to the Secret Rare Alternate Arts. The VMAX cards that are Alternate Arts are considered Secret Rares. A much smaller amount that have been graded in PSA 10 as well. 2,534. But you can see the high point, like what we saw from some of these other ones. $227.70. That's what it hit in April of 2023. And then really started going down. It's been a little flat now over the past few months. You can see it bottomed out in December where it hit 161.79. It gained about 5% back over the last month or so. It's sitting at 169.07, but it'll be interesting again to see, well, is this the bottom or is it going to continue to just level out over these last few months? Now it's going to continue. I think a lot of it is going to be dependent on how people respond to Temporal Forces, on how people respond to the next set releases of the Scarlet and Violet block, because if there's not something excitable uh, that's going to get people's attention in Scarlet and Violet, people are going to continue collecting uh, Sword and Shield, and that could impact the market when it comes to those Sword and Shield singles, specifically the alternate arts, because those are always going to be in such high demand. Here's the Leafeon VMAX from Evolving Skies. This card has been very up and down all over the place. You can see, like what we saw from these other ones in May of 2023, it hit that one-year high of 174.55 or just above 170 uh, before falling back down. And in October, it was down to 143 as a one-year low, so a decent drop right there. But then started climbing back up and hit that one-year high again of 174.55. Now it's kind of chilling in between its one-year low and one-year high, sitting at $160.98. Again, a little bit smaller of a sample size as far as being graded. 6,193 copies that have been graded through PSA with 4,666 of them being in PSA 10. So very close to what we saw for that Rayquaza VMAX. Glaceon VMAX kind of following the same trend as what we saw from the Leafeon VMAX without such a dramatic middle uh, from April of 2023 all the way up until December of 2023. It was relatively flat, anywhere between $136 and $144. And then in December of 2023, where it hit its one-year low of $136.46, after that, it started jumping back up a little bit. It's hanging on at $148.50 currently, which is just off of its one-year high of $152.51, which it hit back in February. So it hasn't been as high as it is right now uh, in a year. It's been a year since it's been at this point. You can see 5,977 of these have been graded, 4,526 of them in PSA 10. So again, uh, not too big of a sample size compared to the Moonbrion, but still uh, a fair amount. Same thing with the Sylveon VMAX, a little bit more for this one. Uh, 5,880 of them have been graded in PSA 10, so more than what we saw from uh, even the, the Rayquaza VMAX, 7,742 total graded uh, with PSA and again kind of all over the place. You can see following the majority of 2023 and October of 2023 it bottomed out to that 126.75 but then it jumped up to a one year high of $142 so it jumped up about 15% over the course of a, a few weeks and now it's come back down a little bit it's sitting at 133.87 so still a little bit closer to its one year low than its one year high. Here's the Galarian Moltres V. This one's been consistently trending in the upward direction uh, since October of 2023 so over the past six months or so. It's been slowly starting to come back. You can see in April of 2023 that's where it hit that one year high of 142.14, uh, but then it dropped over the next five months all the way up until October where it hit that one year low of 117.83. Now it started to come back a little bit and it's sitting at 130.39 so a little bit closer to its one year high than its one year low. It's jumped up a little bit over 10% over the past six months. Uh, a smaller sample size as far as grading goes. Evolving Skies has got a lot more population when it comes to grading than some of these other sets. Only only 4,626 total PSA copies that have been graded with 2,919 of them uh, being PSA 10s. The SP on VMAX for some reason just does not get that much love uh, compared to the Gengar VMAX. I don't know if it's uh, just because it's left out. It just feels out of place in the Fusion Strike set, but you can see this card has been declining pretty much the entirety of 2023. Uh, in February of 2023, that's where it was at its one year high of 163.73. And at that time, SP on VMAX and Gengar VMAX were basically hand in hand basically the same price uh, when it comes to the most expensive cards in Fusion Strike. The difference is Gengar VMAX continued to climb. Espeon VMAX went in the opposite direction. You can see a blip there in April of 2023 before coming back a little bit, and then it spent the entirety of 2023 all the way up until December trending in the downward direction. It hit $119.50 uh, at the end of December. Started bouncing back a little bit. It's sitting at $126.98. Currently, uh, 6,931 copies that have been graded, 4,621 of them 
in PSA 10. Here's the Lugia V from Silver Tempest. I really want to know if just more Silver Tempest hits exist uh, because of the God Packs, because of the God uh, Sleeve Boosters that have been out there, because of the God Tins that have been out there, uh, because of the God Pokeballs. There is so many packs out there that are just loaded with hits. It's got to be impacting uh, this Lugia V price because this Lugia card is very, very cool, uh, but continues to trend downward, even though this is a chase for so many people. It just feels like there's so many more copies that are available of the Lugia. And maybe that's just a conspiracy theory that I'm starting. Maybe uh, you guys have thought it too. You can let me know in the comments section down below but this card was selling for $188.62 in February of 2023 it's been doing nothing but going uh, in the downward direction really ever since release you can see in October of 2023 very close to that one year low started being a little bit flat but then dropped again in January down to $114.24 it's sitting at $116.52 but if more and more of these get pulled you might see a sub $100 card and you can see already a lot being graded as well 11,269 of these exist as far as being graded by PSA with almost 6,800 of them being in PSA 10. So definitely one of the more popular alternate arts to get graded, much like this one right here, the Charizard V alternate art from Brilliant Stars. This one finally started trending back upwards a little bit in October, but again, much like what we saw from Lugia, uh, this card has been trending downward the entirety of 2023 and February was when it was at its one year high of 171.38. It lost almost ha almost half of its value last year all the way up until uh, October where it dropped to that one year low of 103.30 sitting at 116.46 so it's gained about 10% back over the last three or four months. It'll be interesting to see how the next three or four months uh, pan out if it continues to stay consistent or if it starts going uh, in, the, in the backwards direction again but still a decent amount being graded 13,873 PSA copies with 7,000 884 of them uh, in PSA 10. That is quite a large chunk. Uh, here's the Dragonite V from Evolving Skies in April of 2023. This was at its one-year high of $116.98, much like what we saw from the Moombreon. It dropped quite a bit very quick, quickly uh, in October of 2023. It hit that $87.92 uh, one-year low. It's been slowly, steadily coming back quite a bit. It's sitting at $95.36 currently. It's gained about 12% back over the past six months. Uh, 7000 29 copies that have been graded by PSA with 4,059 of them being in PSA 10. Here's the Tyranitar V from Battle Styles. This one in April of 2023 hit that one year high of 114.85. It looked like it was going to continue to trend upwards, uh, but then the bottom just kind of fell out. And you can see in September of 2023 hit that one year low of $90.48. Started coming back a little bit and then dropped back even further. Actually, in December of 2023 is where it hit that one year low of $90.48. Now it has recovered a little bit, sitting at $93.59. Uh, but still trending quite a bit downwards compared to where it was in April. 4,876 of these have been graded, so not nearly as much as what we saw from some of the Evolving Skies alternate arts. 2,826 in PSA 10. And then the last one that we're going to look at is the Machamp V, one of my favorite uh, alternate arts arts out there. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, but been trending downward pretty much all year. So in February of 2023, it started moving up a little bit. You can see in April of 2023, it hit that one year high of 117.47 and just went down all year, all year. Uh, right until December of 2023, that's where it hit its one-year low of $81.97. It's been flat over the last few months. It's sitting at $82.14, but still way down from where it was. It never really got above that 120 mark, despite uh, how cheap it was and inexpensive it was when Astral Radiance pre-order numbers came out for singles. This card was only selling for about $55 pre-order. Uh, blew up quite a bit. Uh, Alternate Arts, uh, definitely not easy to pull, and because of that, it impacted the price quite a bit. But you can see over the past year, like what we saw from some of these other alternate arts just really trending in the opposite direction 3,565 of these have been graded 2,138 of them in PSA 10 I am curious to know what you guys think about how these are going to perform over the next several months 2024 could be a year where you see some steady growth out of all of these because a lot of people just don't have the interest in Scarlet and Violet me personally I love the Paradox Pokemon I'm really excited for Temporal Forces I'm really excited to see what Pokemon does next uh, for this generation I think it's going to be absolutely slapping uh, but you guys can let me know in the comment section down below what you think hope you guys enjoy the content if you do please hit that subscribe button down below leave a like leave a comment it goes a really long way for the algorithm but thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch and listen to me ramble love you guys i'll talk to you again tomorrow until next time peace